and welcome to the Reapers. Today we're in our SU33 and we're looking at the cockpit controls. Now this is what's called a low fidelity model, so not every single control in this cockpit is modeled and interactive. Only about 20 to 30 percent is. So what we're going to do is go over that 20 to 30 percent and um, find out what everything does. So we're going to start on the left to kind of wrap round to the right. So our throttle stick here will mimic the movement of our actual throttle stick. This switch here is our direct control. If we press this switch here, um, then we get direct control of the plane, i.e. we bypass the fly-by-wire system. Take extreme caution if you're going to do that because this is an unstable aircraft and without fly-by-wire you'll almost, almost certainly crash. So you do that by pressing the S key and like that. Um, okay. Uh, next we have the autopilot mode buttons. Uh, you can't press them directly with a mouse but you can control them from options within the um, in the control setup to find out more about that I have a full video on autopilots in the Russian planes in the flanker uh, YouTube playlist next we'll go up to this chap the gear uh, landing lever a selector lever so if that's in the up position the gear would go up if it's in the down position the gear would go down here we have the configuration sim uh, panel so what we've got is if this chap here this lamp is lit then the air brake is out if these that one there and that one there are lit the wings are folded up that one there and that one there are the FOD uh, protection gates for the intakes of the engine they are engaged if they're lit up flaps there and there hook there for the um, arrestor cables and gear down if that and that and that are lit up and this, I believe, hit this lamp is hydraulics in use, so if the gear are travelling up or down, I believe this will be lit. Next here, ground avoid ground collision avoidance switch here, and ground collision avoidance uh, display here to see you know on or off what mode it's in. Uh, next we go to the right chronometer, which just works as a clock in this particular aircraft in this model, and works. Radio altimeter starts from zero, goes up to 1,500 meters. It has a warning lamp if you get below the minimum set value, and the minimum set value is displayed by that arrow there. Next, a combined accelerometer and alpha meter. So this side here shows the current angle of attack of your aircraft. We're slightly just below zero. And this here is our G meter, so we can go from zero up to nine Gs, at which point we'll become critical, or just below eight and a half Gs, whatever that is, 8.75. And we can go down to minus two degrees before it, um, sorry, Gs before it gets critical. And at that point, your engines are going to fail and you're going to start passing out. Next, here we have our weapons panel. Now, most of this, as far as I'm aware, is not interactive, but some of it is. So if we just go and put ourselves in a attack mode, so if we select a weapon, No, I'll take that back. It does not appear to be interactive or it's bugged at this time. But in the other flankers, that would show the amount of gun ammo remaining and that would show the type of mi uh, weapon selected. Uh, so it appears to be not working. Okay, so let's go back down. Two indicator lights down here. Uh, they work, but I'm not sure what they actually display. Next, we've got a barometric altimeter. The small needle reads in 100s of meters, so zero up to 1,000 meters. And the larger needle in 1000s of meters so all the way up to 10,000 meters our QFE is displayed here and our kilometers there next we have our speedo indicated airspeed measured in kilometers per hour so 100 kilometers out an hour up to 1600 kilometers an hour IAS master caution light here uh, why don't we skip up so we've got our AOA indexer here. So when we're landing on a carrier, we have to have a particular ang angle of attack. And this displays that when you're on the correct angle of attack, then this green light will show. When you are too steeper angle of attack, I think, you'll get a yellow sign here. And to lower ye uh, angle of attack, red, I think it's red here or yellow. I can't remember exactly, but that light there. Next, our HUD. This shows various informations to the pilot. Now, we have a full video of the HUD in the playlist, so I'm not going to go through, through it fully, other than to say there are several modes. So we can have one is navigation modes, two, beyond visual range engagement, three, vertical scan mode, four, boresight scan mode, five, helmet um, scan mode, six, longitudinal 
long longitudinal aiming mode, seven ground attack mode, and eight goes to the old fashioned bomb site, but it's bugged at the moment, so I'm not going to go to that. Okay, so here we have this one's a bit controversial, but we think it is a external fuel tank quantity in hundreds, no, thousands of kilos of fuel. Caution lights here, they work, but I'm not sure what, she, what each one displays. Next, our stores indicator. So we have several pylons on the aircraft. They are each represented by a row of lights, a vertical, that one and that one, for instance, for that pylon. If there is a yellow light on this row, then that pylon has a store on it and it can be used. If the one of these accompanying lights is green, then that store is selected and ready to use. So let me go and select something. I've now selected my R27ERs and you can see I've got those ones ready for use and selected. Weapon change, I've got those selected. Weapon change, I've got those selected. Next, our ADI, Artificial Horizon. This tells us our attitude. It tells us our pitch in degrees and our roll angle in degrees. There are also guides as well. So we've got a line here that tells us our required relative elevation or altitude and that it should be up the same up there but for azimuth. We've also got not very. Oh yes, we do. We've got a localizer line here that you can see, which guides us onto uh, a selected azimuth, and a glide slope line which is up there, which guides us onto a particular elevation, and uh, that's covered properly in a navigation tutorial that I've done in this playlist. We have a your slip gauge here. We have a HSI, a horizontal situation indicator. This is our main navigation apart from the HUD. Top down view, compass rows around the outside. We're headed in this direction of this needle. Uh, we have our distance here in kilometers to the next point selected point of interest be that a waypoint or an airfield or whatever our currently selected course a course line is represented by uh, this double uh, white line here we have ILS uh, glide slope and a localizer localizer there glide slope there we have our currently selected heading which is the little green arrow hidden in there that will that will point to our point of interest, selected point of interest, be it a waypoint or an aircraft carrier or whatever that is. Uh, there is also a course deviation line in here, but I don't think I can see it at the moment. Uh, for proper descriptions of these chaps here, then please see the navigation tutorial. Here we have a vertical speed indicator. If we go above here, then we've got uh, 10 uh, meters per second, 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second uh, increasing altitude and vice versa downwards. Here and here we have indicator lights for when the afterburner is on left and right. Here we have intake ramp gate angles or no they're not angles they're percentages I believe. So the inside the intakes we have closable ramps and they close when we're going supersonic to precondition the air for the engines. It's absolutely essential they work otherwise you'll blow your engines up. And when they are engaged, then the equivalent needle left engine or right engine will rise. So that's how you check if your uh, preconditioning gates are working. We can go behind here now. Um, we've got indicator slash warning panel here. I don't know what each one is, but they work. Um, what have we got down here? We've got along the bottom here, one, two and three hidden by the stick. We've got our neutral trim indicators uh, in roll, yaw and pitch. If you are neutrally trimmed in any of them, there will be a green light display. This aircraft can air to air refuel, and there is an air to air refuel switch there for air to air refuel mode. Okay, pressure gauge is next, and let me just double check. Yep, so left wheel brake, right wheel brake, and I believe this is main hydraulic systems pressure. Next, tachometer for the engine in times 10%, so up to 100%, left and right engine internal core speed. Uh, we have the two arrows here on top of each other and the left one is for the left engine the right one is for the right engine next interstage engine temperatures times 100 degrees centigrade so left engine right engine both about 400 at cruise uh, been over these warning lights next fuel gauge simple ladder fuel gauge from 0 to 12,000 kilos of fuel and shown here as a you know a, a numeric display Tanks 1, 2, 3 and 4, whether those tanks are empty, if one of those tanks is empty, they are lit up. Bingo fuel light here. This, the built-in, I don't know the name of it, but the built-in test display, when the aircraft does tests on its systems, then they are reported here. Indicator slash warning lights here work, but I don't know what they represent. 
RWI here, radar warning receiver. This displays to the pilot various radar sources from around the aircraft that we're being painted by. Um, presents them in with various informations. For a full tutorial on this, please see the RWR vid in the flanker playlist. HTD head stand display. Well, if we turn on navigation mode, then we have navigation information, waypoints, air bases, and whatnot. You can see you've got three air bases there. Scale there, speed there, I think true speed. Put it in a um, air to air mode, then it goes to air to air, and you'll see the bad guys and uh, and whatnot there, including access to data link. If we look to the right here, this left panel, this left row of lights is chaff, this here is flares. Shows roughly how many you've got. Each light represents a certain amount of chaff or flares. I don't know how many, about 16 each, I think, but I just use it as a rough guide. So we're half empty of chaff half empty of flares currently. Up here, magnetic strip compass. Okay, that's it. I believe we've covered everything that's interactive of the cockpit of the SU-33. My apologies if I missed anything. It's quite hard to remember which display and which don't, but I hope that helps and I'll see you later.